The U.S. just broke this century's record for annual measles cases. Last time reported cases of measles were this high, the Dream Team won gold at the Barcelona Olympics and Whitney Houston was topping the charts with the Bodyguard soundtrack. There have been more cases so far in 2025 than in any other year since 2019 when 1,274 cases were reported. And we're only halfway through 2025. The largest outbreak this year, the one responsible for the majority of the cases, began in West Texas back in January. It soon spread to nearby New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Kansas. There have been a number of other smaller outbreaks too, with cases having been reported in 37 states so far this year. And three people, two children and one adult, have died. That's more measles deaths in a single year than has been seen any time this century. Measles is incredibly contagious. One sick person can infect 12 to 18 unvaccinated or non-immune people who may also go on to infect as many and so on and so on. Measles is also dangerous because someone with the disease can infect others up to four days before they develop the telltale measles rash. They're also contagious up to four days after the rash breaks out. Unvaccinated or non-immune people who come near someone with measles have a 90% chance of getting it. And the virus can hang around in the air for up to two hours. Measles is mostly known for its rash and fever, but more serious complications such as brain swelling, seizures, and blindness are possible. And like we've seen this year, for every thousand cases, one or two usually die. Thankfully, there's an effective measles vaccine that protects 97% of people who get both doses. In fact, in the year 2000, measles was declared eliminated in the United States, largely because of just how effective the two-dose regimen was. Because measles is so wildly contagious, experts estimate that upwards of 95% of Americans need to be vaccinated to keep outbreaks at bay. Nationally, the vaccination rate is almost 93%, but there are parts of the country where vaccine uptake is significantly lower. For example, the vaccination rate in Gaines County, Texas, where the current outbreak took off in January, uh, it's in the low 80s. Earlier, I spoke with Helen Branswell, a stat legend. Uh, Helen's a longtime stat colleague of mine, but you won't find many people who disagree with me when I say she's one of the best infectious disease reporters working today. Helen, thanks so much for taking the time. No problem. So back in 2000, uh, measles was declared eliminated in the U.S. Is that um, status in jeopardy? Yes, it probably is. So a little bit of an explainer for people. Elimination status means that a virus is no, no longer circulating all the time in your country or in your region. There are occasionally measles cases in the United States, but they're all cases where somebody got infected abroad, came home, and then passed the measles virus to other people, and there's been ongoing transmission from that uh, introduction. Typically, those introductions sort of die out. If you've got a high measles vaccination rate, the virus runs out of people to uh, infect, and so transmission dies out. Um, but if transmission continues for a year, then you would lose elimination status. And uh, whether that's going to happen this year in the United States is still unclear, but uh, certainly given the percentage of kids in the country who are not vaccinated against measles, it seems quite possible that if it doesn't happen this year, it might happen sometime soon. And, and there's reason to believe that the case numbers could actually be higher than what we're seeing. Uh, what, why is that? I mean, right now in the United States, there are multiple uh, measles outbreaks, multiple introductions of the virus, as I had mentioned be before. Uh, but the biggest one, and the one that's responsible for hundreds of cases in the country so far this year, is one that sort of took root in West Texas, nearish to Lubbock, Texas. It started in a community of Mennonites. So these are people who don't have a lot of out, uh, interaction with the outside world. They only really take their kids in for medical care if they really need it. And so you can imagine that there will have been cases there that just never came to the attention of the authorities. Well, vaccine hesitancy has, has been on the rise in our recent years. Why do you think that is? You know, I think it's a bunch of factors. Um, for one, some of the diseases that vaccines prevent, the, the, the vaccines have been so effective in preventing them that people don't know what it is that their kids aren't suffering from. So they tend to be more fearful of the intervention than of the thing that it's preventing. It's, it's you know, you can understand how that would be, but if you, if you have no experience with measles, if you've never seen a kid 
develop measles pneumonia and struggle to breathe. There's no particular reason for you to be fearful of measles. You may be more fearful of what you've heard about the purported dangers of the measles vaccine. Those dangers have been, uh, are not, you know, valid. They've been disproven. And yet the fears about measles vaccine still continue. The, another thing that's probably contributing to it is, um, you know, the COVID hangover. Uh, people, um, people really didn't enjoy COVID, as as you may remember, and um, uh, it, the vaccine mandates, the school closures, the masking mandates, all of those things really have sort of turned people off. Uh, public health leaders, public health measures, and in some cases, vaccines. One ha has seen a decline in vaccine coverage since the pandemic in a bunch of, uh, for a bunch of different things. Flu shot uh, coverage, for instance, has dropped a, a little bit in, in the years since the early days of the pandemic. And I think that's probably contributing with measles as well. Is there reason to believe that numbers like this could become like the new normal? Yeah, there are there are good reasons to be concerned about that. Um, you know, nationally, you need about 95% of kids to be vaccinated against measles for herd immunity to protect everybody. You know, if, if about 95% of kids are, are protected, when a, the virus is introduced from outside, it really will have a hard time finding somebody to infect and those introductions will die out. As the number declines below 95%, the risk of longer outbreaks rises. And right now, nationally, I think the um, uh, vaccination rate is about 92%. So even that small decline gives the virus more room in which to spread. And the national number kind of hides uh, the reality on the ground because in 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 the real world, that 92% or 95% is not homogenous across the country. You know, there are pockets of places where uh, a much smaller percentage of kids are vaccinated. Um, the area in West Texas that we were talking about a minute ago, the vaccination rate there is, I think, about 82%, if, you know, low 80s. Uh, sometimes that's for religious reasons. There are some religious groups that don't necessarily believe in vaccinating their children. And sometimes it's for social reasons. There, you know, groups of people who are anti-vax may live in close proximity to one another for a variety of reasons. So any place where you've got um, a bunch of unvaccinated kids, if the measles virus gets introduced there, you can really see take off, it take off and, and numbers start to climb. And um, and it travels really, really well. I mean, you know, in 2014, there was a big outbreak in the United States that started at Disneyland, but it reached into uh, Quebec, Canada. And there was a bigger outbreak in Quebec because one person who was infected at Disneyland brought the virus back to Quebec to a religious community where people didn't vaccinate. And there was a really large uh, outbreak there, or hundreds of cases. And um, you know, when you're talking to experts, where do they think this is going? Uh, do they think it's going to continue to spread um, steadily, or is there reason to believe it might be slowing down? So where this is going in terms of this year's outbreaks and, and this year's numbers, the spread in Texas seems to have slowed down. Um, you know, it could be that it burned through the susceptible kids so quickly that it is getting to the point where there isn't as much place for it to go. But all the virus needs is, you know, to get for one infected person to go somewhere where there are other susceptible people. And then we could see numbers start to take off again. So um, it's it's really quite hard to say, you know, whether or not we're on the downslope of this uh, outbreak and it's going to sort of the West Texas outbreak and it's going to be extinguished or if it could take off, you know, in another part of the country. And how about the, the federal response under um, RFK Jr.? Um, what's the response to that been like? So that has been quite unusual. I mean, typically when there is a big measles outbreak or any size measles outbreak, uh, you know, public health officials and health officials 
are really adamant about the need to get kids vaccinated. That hasn't been the message out of uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s HHS. He has, as ever, as you you know, our our viewers would know, he's um, he's a longtime vaccine critic, and he has been pretty lukewarm in his uh, embrace of measles vaccination as a means of of uh, putting this outbreak out. He has said it is the best way to stop measles, but he has emphasized that measles is treatable and that uh, vitamin A, for instance, could help to mitigate the worst symptoms of measles. There's not a lot of proof that that's true. I mean, in places where children are vitamin A deficient, it's been shown that vitamin A is helpful, but there wouldn't necessarily be a lot of children who are vitamin A deficient in the United States. That that probably isn't the best advice. And certainly, um, you know, his, he has not promoted measles vaccination in the way one would have expected a Secretary of Health and Human Services to have done. All right, Helen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks again to Helen. Uh, truly the best in the biz. To stay up to date with infectious diseases like measles or bird flu or COVID or more, uh, be sure to follow her work on STAT. And we'll be back next week, same STAT time, same STAT channel.